the notion of liquidity. It is customary when presenting the assets of a balance sheet to list them by degree of liquidity, either from bottom up or from top down. In this course, I use the presentation from bottom up uh, here. That is, this is very liquid, this is less liquid, less liquid, up to very much not liquid. But what do we mean by liquidity? There's a definition. An asset is said to be liquid if it is easy to sell quickly without a loss on its value. For example, official money, banknotes and checking accounts at the bank, is by definition the most liquid asset. It is the asset with which, in the economic system, we pay suppliers and creditors. On the other hand, when we own an apartment in a city, it is a fine asset. You may live in it or rent it, but it is not very liquid. If you need to realize its value quickly because you need cash uh, urgently, you will not get the normal market price for your apartment. You want to have cash in your firm. These are the assets of the firm to pay the bills as they come. But you don't want to have too much cash. Idle cash, you want to put to work into assets that generate revenue. And there is a large choice, of course, of uh, assets that generate revenue. To put cash to work is to make a financial transaction, that is exchange cash for a promise from a borrower. The borrower receives our cash and the borrower promises to pay us in the future various payments uh, until uh, with the contract is uh, finished. This is the most uh, standard representation of uh, the cash flows over time of uh, such a contract. Initially, we shell out somehow cash and then we receive yearly some interest charges and at the end of a certain period we receive our uh, initial value of cash and the last payment. This is the standard representation of what's called a bond. Of course, there are many other ways to, um, to invest cash, and in particular, there are the physical investments, but all these are more risky. The safest way to invest cash while keeping the assets liquid is to buy short-term government bonds from the currency area where we operate. Large creditworthy borrowers also issue promises which are liquid, not so much because they will pay back soon, because it depends the contract, but because you can resell their OU on the secondary market uh, without any difficulty, because they are creditworthy. However, we have the interest rate risk. Let's understand what it means. It has to do with, uh, with time. Whenever we invest money into a financial security, we exchange cash at hand today for a, cash, a flow of cash in the future. Suppose today I lend 1,000 euros to someone for five years with a coupon rate, that's another name for the interest rate, of 4% yearly. And tomorrow, suppose for some reason, it is possible to lend 1,000 euros for five years with the same risk, the same type of borrowers, but now at 6%. Well, then my initial ROU immediately loses value. Let's see, see that with a usual financial calculation. This course is not a course in finance, but uh, it is easy to understand the basic ideas of finance. And anyway, accounting is at the heart, at the bottom of financial analysis as well as monetary analysis. We cannot understand economics, finance and money without having a deep understanding of accounting. 
So here are the usual calculation uh, of the value today of the future cash flows generated by an IOU we bought. Suppose that we bought this IOU which has a, a face value of 1000 euros, a coupon rate of 4%, and a maturity of five years. That is, for five years, we shall receive 4% uh, of the initial value. They are represented here. Uh, in one year, we shall receive 40 euros. In two years, 40 euros. In three years, 40 euros. In four years, 40 euros. And in five years, 40 euros. And also, the initial phase value. And initially, we pay 1,000 euros. Well, uh, even though I have not explained finance in this course, of course, uh, it is easy to understand the idea of present value of these future cash flows. Some calculations show that the present value, the value today of having a promise of receiving 40 euros in one year, it is if the discount rate is 4%, that is precisely the coupon rate here, well, it's 38.46 euros. And here are all the present values of the future cash flows. And what we discover is that their sum is precisely 1,000 euros. That is, when we buy an IOU uh, for this type of payment and we pay 1,000 euros, we have in our pocket something which has the same value. But that is if the discount rate is the same as the interest rate paid by the uh, IOU. If the interest rate goes up right after we have purchased our IOU, well then here are the calculations. The face value is 1000, the coupon rate remains 4%, maturity 5 years, but now the discount rate with which we evaluate the value today of future cash flows is 6%. Well, then the present values of the future cash flows are 37, 35, etc., etc. Their sum is now no longer 1,000, but only uh, 916. We see that our bond that we purchased, our U bond, promise, pledge, whatever, has a lost value. And here is a small anecdote. When England fought the Battle of Waterloo, it is said that Nathan Mayer Rothschild, who knew before the London stock market that England had won the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, it let the stock market believe that England had lost. And then the interest rate on British government bonds went up and the value of the bonds went down. Rothschild, with a straw man, bought most of them and later on made a pile of money. The anecdote may be true or not true, but it illustrates very clearly the idea of the variation of value of bonds depending upon interest rates. You may think that we are far away from our accounting course on liquidity, but we are not. Remember that what we want uh, with uh, our assets is that they do not lose value. Uh, here we have cash, we have short-term financial assets, we have clients, sometimes we have to provision them, stocks, etc., and the fixed assets, which are less liquid, less easy to sell than the current assets. And of course, we also want our firm to have all its tools, that is this, well-tuned to produce profit. In other words, we, have, we are in an economy where everything is measured with the yardstick of money. The deep financial reasoning underlying economic activity leads to paradoxes. General Electric for years earned much more money from its financial activities than from manufacturing, like bulbs, appliances, or electric motors. So to finish up, the name of the game in firms, in running firms, is to make profits. But measured how? And that, again, can be discussed, of course, it's also to produce a value, to produce jobs to a, to a community, etc. But let's, uh, let's start from this uh, uh, conventional way to look at firms. So the answer is the yardstick, the measure of the profit, is with monetary measurement, that is, with the yardstick of liquidity. But the true yardstick is the preservation of purchasing power of what we own. 
and currencies may be a poor yardstick, an even poorer reserve of purchasing power. On September the 23rd of 2010, at a meeting in St. Petersburg, Putin and Jabao announced that the dollar would no longer be the currency used in the exchanges between Russia and China.